Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to episode 12 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I want to discuss stepper drivers and perhaps some other ancillary information. Keep in mind that I'm not a teacher, a machinist, or an engineer. I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. It is my hope that over time, as videos are released, the hobbyists can use some of this information in their attempt to make their own CNC machine. With some luck, it is my hope that the learning curve will be flattened somewhat and help people avoid some of the more confusing parts along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. I know this series has to be frustrating for those who just want to know how to hook their router or their mill up to some steppers or servos and make it run. While I appreciate the anticipation, I want to remind everyone that this series should be viewed as a learning tool of how the system works and is not intended to show you a few examples and then leave you hanging to the wind to your own devices. My hopes are that by the time you work through the material I've put together, you'll have a firm grasp of how Linux CNC controller works and what parts are responsible for what function. By taking this approach, I feel you'd be better off in the long run for it. In this episode, I want to discuss stepper drivers, but I thought I'd give you an overview of where they sit in the scheme of the Linux CNC controller. Let's start with what one might view as the top of the list and work our way down. When running a CNC machine, the controller takes the G-code file and runs it through an interpreter, checking for syntax, identifying M codes and G codes to be translated into functions that the controller can perform. This information is passed along to a trajectory planner. The trajectory planner looks at where things are, like the position of an axis, and determines where it needs to go from this point to get to the next program point in space. The trajectory planner then instructs the motion component of Linux CNC where the next point will be. Now that the motion portion knows the next point, its job is to provide a stream of pulses to the attached motor drivers. The motor drivers, in our case the stepper drivers, are then responsible for moving the motor to the desired position and direction. I've provided a graphic on the screen to help you visualize this flow. So you're probably asking yourself, if this episode is on stepper motor drivers, then why show us all of this? Well, the simple answer is context. I want you to understand in the scope of Linux CNC controller system what I'm talking about so that the individual pieces have context or a frame of mind. In the last episode, number 11, I suggested that you watch a couple of videos on the stepper motor and how they operate. If you've not done that yet, please take a few minutes and watch these videos, especially if you've never worked with stepper motors. Understanding how these little marvels of science operate goes a long way to understanding the job of the stepper motor driver. I've provided links to these videos in the description of this episode, so pause me and go watch them. I'll wait for you to return. I promise. So what is a stepper driver? Recall from episode 11, an introduction to stepper motors, that I explained that the coils on a stepper motor have to be energized sequentially to make the motor's rotor rotate. The piece of hardware that energizes the coils is called a stepper motor driver, stepper driver, or simply a driver. Although stepper drivers can look very different between one make and model to another, they all have the same basic features. They take the control signals like step pulses and direction and translates them into motor movement by energizing the appropriate coils. Depending on the manufacturer of the driver, it may have other features included with it. For example, micro-stepping, enable inputs, and fault detect inputs. Another important feature of stepper motor drivers is the ability to maintain current in a stepper motor coil at voltages that would normally be too high for the stepper motor to work without overheating or burning the coils up. The driver does this by monitoring the current delivered to the motor and limits it by a preset amount. This is commonly called a chopper circuit and is used in order to maintain the highest torque at all times. Motor coils being an inductive circuit resist current and to compensate for this, a voltage higher than is needed to drive the motor coil is used so that the current can come up as quick as possible. When purchasing stepper motor drivers, keep in mind the requirements of the motors that you plan to use in mind. Stepper motor drivers have discrete input and output signals. 
As mentioned in the previous slide, these include such things as step input, direction input, and motor outputs. If you recall way back when we were talking about latency for Linux CNC controller, you may recall that I told you that everything in the electronic world takes time to process data. This time, or latency, may be very small, but it's there nonetheless. When choosing a stepper motor driver, the timing requirements are typically included with the documentation. Things like how fast you can feed step pulses to the driver, called step frequency, or how long the pulse must be on for the driver to recognize it, for example, direction hold time, these bits of information will be required when setting up Linux CNC to use your driver. When we perform the latency test on the computer that will be in the controller, we recorded a number. The Linux CNC controller's latency combined with the timing requirements of the driver will ultimately determine how fast a motor can be run before losing steps due to latency. Finally, many hobbyists buy drivers that are of Chinese origins. These drivers sometimes lack any real documentation and you're left scratching your head trying to figure out what settings to use. Don't worry, there are reasonable values that you can use for your stepper driver if you don't know the actual data for the driver. The drawback is that you may not be stepping the motor as fast as you possibly could. Some experimentation will find a happy medium. I'll discuss this in more detail when I get to the step comp utility portion of the series. In some applications, you may find that driving your linear motion using a single step from a stepper motor causes movement to be too large to get to the resolution you're looking for. Although I'll be discussing linear motion in a separate video, Let's use an example to illustrate what I'm talking about. Say we wish to build a CNC router and we plan on moving one of the axes with a rack and pinion gearing. For the sake of argument, let's assume that we have a 20 tooth pinion driven by our stepper motor at a diametric pitch of 16. Let's do some quick calculations to determine how far the pinion will move along the rack in one revolution of the motor. First, we calculate the pitch diameter. The pitch diameter of your gear equals the number of teeth divided by the diametral pitch. In our case, this is 20 divided by 16, which equals 1.25 inches. Now that we know the diameter of the pinion gear on the pitch line, we can calculate the circumference of the gear using pi times the pitch diameter, or 3.14159 times 1.25. This gives us a circumference of 3.927 inches. This is how far the pinion will move along the rack with one revolution of the pinion. Now we assume that the stepper motor that we're using has 200 steps per revolution. If we divide the circumference of the pinion by this, we find how far the pinion moves in one step of the motor. So, 3.927 divided by 200 equals 0 0.0196, or 19 thousandths and six tenths. Now this may be okay, but if we are machining material and it has to be a closer tolerance, it just won't work. So what do we do? Well, two solutions exist. First we find a new pinion that has fewer teeth, or we replace the rack and pinion with a set that has a larger diametral pitch. Or second, use micro-stepping. Micro-stepping allows us to break a single step of a motor into smaller steps. These are usually broke up by a base 2. For example, we can half step, breaking each full step into two steps. Micro steps can be broken down even further, for example, quarter or eighth steps. Notice they double each time. Now, if we set the driver to 16 micro steps per step, we increase the resolution of the motor from 200 steps to 200 times 16 or 3200 steps. Using this, we move the pinion along the rack by only one thousandths and two tenths of an inch for each step. So for this example, we can see that we can use micro-stepping to solve the problem. But now we've introduced another potential problem. Instead of 200 step pulses to rotate the motor one revolution, it now takes 3200 step pulses to rotate the motor one revolution. This will result in a slower moving machine. Everything is a trade-off. Last, I want to talk about power supplies. Your stepper drivers will have a rated voltage that they are able to use. This is usually a range that will be listed in the driver's documentation. 
The power supplies that you purchase need to supply some amount of current per phase that the driver will be supplying. When you purchase your power supplies for your project, make sure that they can deliver the current required for all your drivers you will use. To illustrate this, let me provide an example. Say we're building a machine with three axes of movement. Each phase of the stepper motor will require three amps of current. We can have up to two coils or phases of the motor energized at one time. In a worst case scenario, all three motors will have two coils energized. Armed with this information, we can calculate the minimum current requirements for the power supply. Three motors times two coils each equals six coils energized. Six coils times three amps each equals 18 amps. We'll want some leeway in our supply, so we should choose one that will supply this current plus 25% more for safety. I would look for a supply that would provide at least 25 amps. Alternatively, you can use multiple power supplies. For example, a 20 amp supply providing current to two of the drivers and another 10 amp supply providing current to the third driver. So where to from here? Well, we have nearly covered enough material to begin setting up Linux CNC to run our stepper motors. We have installed and tested the Linux CNC installation. We've covered I.O. options, the parallel port, stepper motors, stepper drivers, and touched on power supply units, or PSUs. Next, I would like to talk a little bit about linear drive systems, such as rack and pinion, lead screw, and gear reductions. After that, we'll examine the step comp utility and the information that the utility will ask for you to run your stepper motors. We've covered a lot and once the controller is configured to run the machine, we'll have loads of detail that we'll need to cover over time. I sure hope you stay with me. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of dabbling in it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.